And last but not the least, I'll uh, invite my friend Eric Mertens to come and share his experience as well. First of all, I would like to thank Mehdi Contour for inviting me to give uh, this talk and this uh, lunch symposium. I'm actually going to elaborate a little bit more after Satish's uh, brilliant presentation on, of the, uh, the add-on and how to bring actually patients into their visual comfort zone. And what do I mean with that is my uh, financial disclosure for this talk. So what is our mission as, as refractive or cataract surgeons? is to have plenty of happy patients. Eh? Whether they have 20, 20 or, or 20, 30, actually that doesn't matter, but they, they need to be happy. And uh, that is what we want to see in our waiting rooms. Now the reality is that a lot of our patients still need glasses post-surgery, and especially post-refractive surgery before when you uh, are going to explant the lens. Now, when you look at uh, cataract surgery itself, and more than 20 million cases are done each year, and only one million of them are implanted with a premium IOL for now. Uh, and uh, 19 million are implanted with monofocals, which of 11.4 million of them, they still feel they're out of their visual comfort zone, even with a monofocal implantation. A lot of patients are not really satisfied what we have done with them. So target refraction achievement is extremely important. Oliver Findel published this in the Journal of Cataract Refractive Surgery 2015, eh, saying that 20 to 30 percent, uh, you get a refractive surprise of more than one diopter after cataract surgery. Another nice literature is by Cook in the JCRS, 75.1 percent were within half of diopter range. Still 25 percent are outside the half of diopter range, and with premium IOLs, this is not a good result. Now, what are our management options when we have to deal with these patients? Eh? Of course, we can give them spectacles or contact lenses, but that was sometimes the goal, not wearing them. We can do laser refractive surgery, we can do PRK, LASIK, LASIK, SMILE, or we can do an IOL exchange. And we all know that this is, uh, well, can induce a lot of complications, capsule rupture, and so on. So these are all things you have to consider. And in, in after in yaki capsulotomy, this becomes, of course, much and much more difficult. The fourth solution is uh, the topic of my talk. So the add-on uh, lenses, they are specifically designed for ciliary sulcus implantation. Now, this is the, mace, the main indication in my practice is this lens, and I will tell you why. Huh? This, it's so correct for amitropia after cataract surgery, so the retrofit approach, and also presbyopia correction with the uh, trifocal design, as was shown also already by Satish. So when people have monofocal eye well, sometimes it happens that, oh, I did not know that I would be so handicapped when, when in daily life, my dashboard playing cards with friends, I always need glasses. So I need actually, after my uh, uh, monofocal eye wall implantation, I want, I want for a correction for near as well. So uh, the retrofit uh, approach works very well. I will show you this. The characteristics of the lens were very well pointed out by Satish. I will not elaborate on them. So this is how you put in the lens in the cartridge. Yeah? So actually, the convex side towards you, you tuck the haptics nicely into the cartridge uh, before you close it. Then check it on our microscope, whether there are no haptics in, 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 the, in the wings, actually, of your cartridge. Second video I want to show you is this one. Uh, this is a, a post yak capsulotomy case uh, with the multifocal eye wall in place. And when you do that in the first time, you, you will be afraid, of course, because you do not want to end that first lens into the vitreous. So what I do is, with a second instrument, I go under the optic of the add-on lens to have no downward pressure, and then slowly injecting it. You can see uh, I put some viscoelastic under the iris here and here and there and there to easily put the haptics under the iris. Then I go in between the first lens and the posterior pers uh, to, to get rid of the OVD. And then this, this haptic is repositioned at the end uh, with the IA uh, uh, in the end of the surgery. Now this is another example. This was a, a WIOL. This is a continuous focus IOL um, where we had a refractive surprise. 
and also here, what is the solution to explant these large lands was it's not impossible, but it's extremely difficult. So uh, I went to the add-on approach, the retrofit approach. You do a three-step corneal incision, as I can show you here, and then uh, again using some viscoelastic, viscoelastic here under the iris, there under the iris, just to make sure that the iris comes up so you can have easily the, the haptics gone into the sulcus. Second instrument through the paracentesis, and then the lens comes in. And uh, here I'm, I'm not supporting inferior, uh, on the inferior side, the, the add-on because there is no yeah, capsulotomy done. And then I will tuck the haptics under the iris. Does it actually do the same as what we do always, but this is a very per, uh, peculiar or particular case. Why? I will show you right away. Um, putting the, the haptics here under the iris, okay. But then I saw something, and I hope you can see it you can, here. Something is going on in this corner. Hope you can see it uh, right away. Um, actually, the, the haptics was folded up onto itself. So, uh, and you can see it because it's, it, it was not well centered. This lens centers very well. And at the end, I could uh, put the haptic here nicely in the right position. I think you, yeah, you can see it here. That is not, it is folded onwards, and you can see it nicely. Um, so go in and reposition that haptic. It's actually, not, it's, it's very easy, but you have to just pay attention to it. And you can see it here very easily because this lens is not centered. And all of our lenses with this approach are centered well. So you see it's very easy to, uh, to reposition it. Can we go to the next slide, please? Is that, uh, or I just wait until the end of the video, and it will automatically go to the next. I hope. Or can you can you advance the slide? No. I cannot do it here. The the second video, the second video, and then advance because when I click, it re the video will restart. So um, implanting this lens is actually very easy. It takes a couple of minutes. So what are the main points here? Putting the lens nicely into the cartridge. Take care that the haptics are not in between the wings of the cartridge. By injecting the lens, in a normal case, just lift the iris a bit with your viscoelastic. Go in between the add-on lens and the, the lens which is all already in the back to get rid of the OVD for uh, avoiding pressure spikes. Satish mentioned that as well. Uh, and when you have a post yak capsulotomy case, just go with your second instrument under the add-on so there is no downward force. That you're not applying force on the premium lens in the back, maybe rupturing more the posterior capsule. You do not want that uh, for yeah. Now, next slide, please, yeah. If you can uh, advance this one. Advance, yes, please. Okay, so uh, after implantation of a secondary intracular lens to correct residual uh, refractive error after cataract surgery, uh, this is a viable uh, surgical option to correct it. This was published in Clinical Ophthalmology in 2017 by uh, Kael Gunderson. This was his results. You see that the pre-op uncorrected visual acuity was o a mean of 0.2 LOCMAR, which went down to uh, 0.0 to 0.05 LOCMAR postoperative. As you can see, that the, uh, the spherical equivalent refractive error came down from the blue region for to, a, to a more uh, around uh, zero. And then my last point of my talk is why not laser? You can, you can up, we, we can touch up with laser uh, when, when you put in premium IOLs. And I used to do that, but, but in these, these patients are 45, 50 years and older, and what do we see here? A lot of tear film problems. The break up time in many of these cases is low. And when you touch up with LASIK PRK smile, you will end up with more severe dry eyes. And the patient will blame you because, doctor, you touched my eye. And now I have fluctuating vision. And actually, I'm not so happy with it. So there are a lot of instruments on the market who can analyze it. This is an example of the HD analyzer. Uh, we can see the healthy eye and accelerated breakup time, and of course, a dry eye here uh, on the bottom. And uh, this nice publication uh, tells, it, tells actually the story. What 
is what gives the satisfaction rate of a patient after cataract surgery or after lens implantation, it's, it's a reflective result, of course, but also it is the dry eye symptoms. Eh? The patient report visual functioning, the dry eye symptoms are more closely related with patient possible dissatisfaction than with objective clinical measures of visual acuity or the signs of dry eye. So keep that in mind. And we want all our patients having a break up time which is 10 seconds or longer. And uh, when you don't have it before surgery, we can treat it, of course, and make sure that um, you don't end up with a drier eye post-implantation. Post Here the same, can you advance this, uh, please? This the same, advance the, the slide, yeah. So uh, in my practice, 62% had severely abnormal non-invasive breakup time of less than five seconds, and a satisfaction rate one month after surgery was 76%. What was satisfaction rate when they had to quote out of five, for me four out of five or five out of five, is a good uh, satisfaction of the patient. So there is a high prevalence of dry eye symptoms after cataract surgery, almost 56%. So more than half of your patients have that. So um, another thing I want to talk about, and then I will conclude. So upgrade for spectacle independence with the first Q uh, diffractive add-on lens. The indications in my practice are pseudophagic patients with monocular, monofocal capsule back uh, eye wells. And um, when I do not implant these ones with sonolopathies, of course, then centration is not always ensured. Other eye diseases, such as severe macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. If these pathologies turn up later after surgery, it's, you, it's good to have an add-on lens there because you can still explant it. So um, you can ha have a lot of so op op opportunities and solutions now. The Liberty lens, as was pointed out by the, by the two first speakers and the add-on lens. Uh, one of the final slides here is this is the binocular, the focus curve of the, of the uh, Liberty and the monocular of the first Q. And in conclusion, I can say that test all patients preoperatively on dry eye symptoms because your satisfaction rate will go on. 93%, I went, went from 76 previously to 93% one month postoperatively by not doing laser surgery touch-up but using the, the sulcus lens, the add-on. And uh, this is the spherical or the multifocal you can put in those eyes to achieve our mission to have plenty of happy patients. Thank you very much for your kind attention.